This video includes a paid sponsorship from NordVPN, but I'll talk more about that later. Back in the fall of 2020, Tesla launched their full self-driving beta software to a small number of testers, and while impressive, that initial release still required quite a lot of interventions. But how much better is Tesla's latest full self-driving software release that moved from a beta release to what Tesla is now calling supervised FSD? Follow along as I discuss how impressive Tesla's version 12 software really is. I'm also going to talk about how much Tesla has improved over the years. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give my estimates for when I believe Tesla will actually be able to release software to allow fully driverless vehicles. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. If you've been following Tesla's FSD progress, then you know somewhat recently Tesla released version 12 of their software out into the public. And I'll talk more about the differences between version 10, 11, and 12 later on in the video. But I wanna talk now about just how impressive this version of the software is. And I wanna use some examples from an AI driver video on YouTube. And I definitely recommend that you go check out and subscribe to AI Driver on YouTube. There's a lot of great FSD content on that channel. But in a recent video on that channel with FSD version 12.3, in this video, the driver said that this is the quote, most human feeling version of FSD yet. And also that quote, version 12 seems to be able to anticipate what people are going to do really, really well. With that being said, while driving on normal roads is kind of par for the course, this new version of Tesla's software does quite well in parking lots as well. And here are a few clips from a parking lot example where FSD version 12 is doing a great job and looks very smooth and human-like. You can see another driver ahead of us leaving their parking spot. And what I love here is that it's not coming to a full stop and doing a slow one or two mile an hour creep the entire time. And I know that may not seem like much, but creeping slowly really does show a lot of intent to other drivers, which is what they're used to and makes it feel a lot more competent. There's a pedestrian on the right hand side who just walks out without a care in the world. She never looked back or anything. I think don't think she has a clue we're here, but uh, the beta does a great job yielding for her. It can be pretty tough to escape a situation like this, but luckily there's a pedestrian who's walking across in front of the car to the left and it actually takes this opportunity and goes for it. This was extremely well done. It chose a perfect moment to pull out. And this is something that version 11 had quite a bit of trouble with. It would have been yielding to pretty much every vehicle in the scene. In addition, this FSD software is so good that here are two examples where the FSD software saw pedestrians that the driver at least initially didn't see. Now you may be able to just barely make out this pedestrian on the visualizations that I in the car did not see at all. So I thought this person turning right was just stopping in the road for absolutely no reason here. I did not see the pedestrian crossing in front of him at all. This is one of those scenarios where I feel like the car may have had a little bit better of an understanding of what was going on than I did in the car because I didn't even know that pedestrian was there until I started editing this video. As we approach this next unprotected left turn, for some reason the car felt extremely hesitant to proceed and I was like, why the heck is it so hesitant here? And then I saw the pedestrian walking through the crosswalk. Now you can go back and watch that, but this pedestrian seemed to appear out of absolutely nowhere. Here's an example of the FSD software making extra room for a cyclist driving on the side of the road. There is a cyclist to our right in an oncoming car approaching, and it decides to shoot the gap, even running over the center line a little bit, which was extremely human-like and probably how everybody would have treated that situation. That is an area where older versions struggled quite a bit. This software is also quite good at making unprotected left turns as well. Coming up here, we have our first pretty tough unprotected left turn and the speed limit on this road is 40, but as you can see by the Model Y passing in front of us, traffic is flowing a little bit faster than that. It does have to creep really far out here, even over the crosswalk in order to have any visibility of incoming traffic. And after the car passes that comes from the right, it creeps out a little bit more, makes sure it's safe and then proceeds. You can see it crossing right over those lane lines there, taking the human path through that turn for sure. 
There are quite a few examples in this video of the car's software acting very human-like. And here's an example of the software being very courteous to a car and allowing them to pull out of a parking lot in front of the vehicle. Now we've seen quite a few pretty human-like moves out of the beta so far, but this next one definitely tops it. It's probably one of the most human things I've ever seen it do. We have a right turn to make at this stoplight ahead and traffic in front of us begins slowing down and they actually come to a full stop here and a car approaches from the right hand side out of that parking lot. Instead of pulling up behind the car in front of us, which would have blocked this guy into the parking lot, it takes the polite approach and lets this guy go. He even waves thanks before he goes. This was an absolutely incredible move. I remember not that long ago, full self-driving wouldn't even drive over these green markings on the road because it was scared of them. Look how far we have come. With that being said, while those are some positive examples, this software is not perfect just yet because there were several um, disengagements. For example, the car made a mistake trying to squeeze between cars and trash cans and really did a hard stop when it decided it couldn't fit through this tight spot. And then later on, the car was actually hesitant to squeeze into areas where it appeared like it had enough room, but it was somewhat of a tight fit. In addition, the software also had an issue with an area that had a closed road, and here's that example. Now, we have a left turn to make here, but as you may be able to see off to the left, the road is closed. There is enough room to get around those cones though, so let's see what it wants to do here. You can see a very slow creep into the intersection. I almost feel like it knows it shouldn't turn left here, but it's still trying to figure out a way to do it. And it sits here for quite a while until a car approaches from behind us. And at that point, it goes for it which does cause our first critical disengagement because unlike the last video where the road closure said road closed except for local traffic, this one is a real road closure and I did not want to interrupt whatever was going on over there. Overall though, despite a few disengagements, this is a great example of just how impressive Tesla's software is becoming and how much more human-like it is appearing while driving and making decisions. I definitely recommend once again that you subscribe to AI Driver on YouTube and I will put a link down in the video description and I recommend that you go back and watch this full video. It's very, very impressive. With that being said, I wanna step back and talk about just how much Tesla software has improved over the years. But before I do that, this portion of today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. You may not know it, but your online activity is constantly being tracked by many of the websites that you visit and your location is not private. However, when you connect to the internet through NordVPN, your location is masked and your data is encrypted so you can avoid being tracked whether you're at home or connected to a public Wi-Fi connection. All VPN services are not created equal and can slow down your connection speeds. However, NordVPN is nearly twice as fast as the next VPN provider, so you can safely browse without sacrificing speed. And since they have 5,900 plus servers in 60 countries, you can experience a fast VPN experience pretty much wherever you are in the world. And they allow you to connect up to six devices at one time. Check out everything that NordVPN has to offer by going over to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. And if you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months free and a huge discount. And also don't worry, it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Okay, when it comes to a brief history of how much Tesla software has improved over the years, less than 10 years ago, Tesla first released Autopilot to the public. In October of 2015, with a software release, Tesla Autopilot was made available for those who purchased the software. The system was basically a combination of adaptive cruise control and lane assistance features that enabled basic single lane level two driving assistance. This initial version one of the software and the hardware was not intended to enable full self-driving vehicles. However, around one year later in October of 2016, Autopilot hardware version 2.0 was launched and Tesla at that time claimed that vehicles with hardware 2 had what was necessary to enable full self-driving in the future and Tesla introduced the term enhanced autopilot to describe the new features that were added. 
In August of 2017, Tesla's Autopilot Hardware 2.5 was introduced, and it had the same core features as Hardware 2.0, but with added redundancy and reliability. In October of 2018, Tesla made a big step forward when they released and rolled out their Navigate on Autopilot feature for those who had the Enhanced Autopilot or FSD software. And once the software was kind of proven out with some basic step changes, it allowed Tesla's vehicles to automatically change lanes on the highway, so more than just single lane support. Then in April of 2019, Tesla released their full self-driving hardware 3.0 computer, and this computer had Tesla design chips and a massive increase in processing power. According to Tesla, this computer is now required for full self-driving vehicles, and because of this, Tesla offered a free upgrade of the new computer to those who paid for FSD if they had the older version 2 or version 2.5 autopilot computers. With that being said, things started to really heat up in October of 2020 when Tesla first started releasing their FSD beta software to a limited number of drivers. Then a little bit less than a year later, they released their version 10 of the full self-driving software. And then in November of 2022, a sign that Tesla was very impressed with the progress they were making, they made a wide release of FSD beta instead of it being limited to a small number of people. In March of 2023, Tesla released their version 11 of their FSD software. And in that same month, Tesla quietly started installing hardware version 4 FSD computers on Model S and X vehicles. However, it is important to note that hardware 4 is not necessary for FSD software. Hardware version 3 should be sufficient. Then in February of this year, February 2024, Tesla released their version 12 of their full self-driving software, and that was the most significant release yet and the most impressive as well. With that being said, I want to talk about the differences between version 10, 11, and 12 of Tesla's full self-driving software. With version 10, as compared to version 9 of Tesla's software, according to this article on Not A Tesla App, Com, quote, this release of beta is said to include a completely retrained neural net. So whereas version 10 had a completely retrained neural net, with version 11, Tesla went from a two stack setup, having a stack for highway driving and a stack for city driving, and they combined that to a single stack setup. Here's a quote from Tesla's version 11 FSD software release notes as shared in this Tasmanian article. Enabled FSD beta on highway. This unifies the vision and planning stack on and off highway and replaces the legacy highway stack, which is over four years old. The legacy highway stack still relies on several single camera and single frame networks and was set up to handle simple lane specific maneuvers. FSD Beta's multi-camera video networks and next-gen planner that allows for more complex agent interactions with less reliance on lanes makes way for adding more intelligent behaviors, smoother control, and better decision-making. However, since this was such a major change going to a single stack setup, as Elon Musk mentioned in Tesla's Q1 2023 conference call, quote, there'll be a little bit of two steps forward and one step back between releases for those trying the beta. But the trend is very clearly towards full self-driving, towards full autonomy. As an example, forum member Eddie123 on the Tesla Motors Club forum posted this on October of 2023 with various new problems with each of these version 11 Tesla software updates. But nonetheless, this was a big move for Tesla going to a single stack setup. But version 12 is where the magic really starts happening. And this is what we're seeing right now, because as Elon previously made clear in a post on X.com, version 12 is an end-to-end -end AI system, meaning that there are not specific lines of code written for various aspects of driving, but instead the vehicle makes decisions based on Tesla's neural net, which has been trained with real-world video and images. In addition, Tesla has gone away from using the beta term for their software, and now they're calling it supervised FSD. With that being said though, those who want to try out the software, Tesla recently dropped the price considerably. For example, if you want to subscribe to FSD on a monthly basis, it used to be $199 per month and Tesla recently dropped that down to $99 per month. In addition, Tesla recently made available a free 30-day trial and this 30-day trial also applies when you purchase a new Tesla vehicle. You get 30 days of free FSD to test it out. 
For those who would rather pay upfront for the software instead of subscribing, that price has gone down to $8,000. This $8,000 price is a great deal, especially since the price went all the way up to $15,000 at its peak and more recently was at $12,000. When it comes to milestones with Tesla's FSD software, recently this was posted on the at Tesla underscore AIX.com account that 1 billion, yes, with a B, 1 billion miles have been driven with FSD beta. That's really impressive. And with a recent price change, since there's going to be more users of the software, this miles driven number is going to go up a lot more. And this is also going to give Tesla a lot more data to train their system. With that being said, as impressive as Tesla's even version 12 is, it's still technically, according to regulators, a level two system, meaning that it's a driver's assistance system and that the driver has to be ready to take over at any time and completely be attentive to the road around them. Technically, the driver in the seat is still responsible for the vehicle. For the car to get to a level four or level five system, there has to be um, really more progress made, as impressive as it is right now. But with that being said, version 12 does have moments when it acts like a level four or level five system, at least when it comes to its capabilities. But once again, it still requires some intervention and it requires an attentive driver ready to take over at any time. When it comes to my estimates of when Tesla will actually be able to move according to regulators to like a level four system or even a level five system in the future, I believe it's very possible that Tesla could move to a level four system, which basically is unsupervised driving when certain conditions are met. I believe they could do that within 12 to 18 months. And of course, this will depend on regulators. It may not be in every state, every municipality, but in certain areas, I believe in 12 to 18 months, Tesla very well could have level four software enabled in certain areas. And what Tesla is doing really gives me confidence that that could happen. When it comes to level five full self-driving, meaning the vehicle can drive by itself in all situations, I believe that's going to take quite a bit more time. But nonetheless, it's impressive what Tesla is doing without having LiDAR. Of course, Tesla has long not been a fan of LiDAR, saying it's not necessary, and I believe it's not necessary, and Tesla is proving that it's not. Tesla's vehicles no longer have ultrasonic sensors, and the Model 3 and the Model Y currently do not have radar sensors. The Model S and X got radar back with hardware 4, um, but the Model 3 and Y don't yet have radar back yet. So Tesla Vision is doing all the heavy lifting here combined with their impressive AI neural network. And it's just impressive what Tesla has been able to do. Hopefully once again, in 12 to 18 months, Tesla actually has a level four system um, driving in certain areas on the road, because I would love to see Elon prove the naysayers wrong. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Make sure that you click the link in the video description to check out more about NordVPN and what they have to offer. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and helps make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.